Oh, hi friends. I'm up in the dressing room. I'll do a quick video while it's quiet. Oof. So we're called in for rehearsal. I'm ironing a tuck shirt. Um, we're called in, they're, they're called in for rehearsal, so we're doing the prep. And this gets very challenging in this very tight theater because there's nowhere to be. If they're in their rooms, there's nowhere for us to prep. There, I can't set up in the hallway. I, I try to do things here in um, my leading man's room while he's not in the room, you know? I mean, it's his room, but I do have stuff to take care of. So trying to do that while they just got called downstairs for a note. They come in at noon, uh, get into their mics and stuff, and then go downstairs for notes from last night's performance, and then they get on stage to rehearse what they're still tweaking. It's interesting to me that a show that's been did readings, did a workshop, I'm sure, did an out-of-town production in La Jolla, came to Broadway to previews, to a new version for Netflix, to new this this version now, is still tweaking and shifting and adjusting things. It's great that they're working on it to make it the best they can make it, but it's, uh, and we're not doing huge changes at this point, uh, just lines and, and lyrics, and, and I wonder how much of that is the creative team having, you know, friends that they trust coming in to see it and having suggestions and thoughts on it because even last night there were a couple of like, oh, that, that line sounds a little better and oh, that lyric is a little spiced up and, and a little better. Um, so it, it's interesting to me that uh, we're not set yet. So now, but the, the word is that on Thursday, we are freezing the show. Uh, free, freezing mean like no more changes. Um, the show is frozen. Uh, famous Ethel Merman story, I think it was on Gypsy. She was notorious for don't make any changes after I say it's frozen. And they came to her and said, can you just adjust? And she said, call me Clarence Birdseye, but this show's frozen. Uh, anyways, that's uh, allegedly Thursday because as of Friday, reviewers start to come in to see the show. Uh, we don't open until next Wednesday, but of course, it's only in the movies where like, it's opening night, the critics are there, they'll be running it into the papes. That's not real. They come days before so they can see it review it, write it up, get it printed, and we won't, you know, reviews will come out while we're doing the opening night performance on um, Wednesday of next week. Oh, a couple of little things. Look, this is an elastic cufflink. It's two little buttons on a, on a hunk of elastic, doink, doink, because it's a French cuff and, you know, no practical in, out, not undoing a cufflink. Uh, what else can I tell you about previews and reviews? And it is interesting that even in this day and age, uh, the New York Times review can really still make or break a show. Uh, not necessarily, but we'll see. Now, plenty of shows, Wicked did not get great reviews out of town. And look at how many years they've been there. Beauty and the Beast did not get great reviews on Broadway. Look at the run of that. Uh, Phantom, nope. So you never know. Um, another thing that I think might help us is now we know international tourists are coming back to the city or allowed to, bringing their own versions of Coco with them. Great. Uh, I think the Diana story is an international, people love her and her story. Oh, watch this, ready? Okay, good, this is my, okay, so there's a magnet at the top. I, oh, I messed with that, but look. Dink, dink, bow tie. Boom, I'm not messing with this anymore. My lady, man, we were thrilled last night that it just all worked magically and crisply because oof, done messing with it. Uh, and this is his other standard shirt. Anyways, I'm just blabbering while I day work. I was, uh, there was a million things I wanted to tell you about, um, you know, press previews and all of that business. And well, that's, that's coming up next week. But for today, they've still got their notes and their stuff on stage. I think my stuff is more or less settled. But, um, as long as he's in the clothes and we didn't get any costume notes for his track last night, so I'm happy, he's happy. We both were like, these magnets are great. I spent all day yesterday fucking with magnets because this tuck shirt has two, two different ones here and a different one here. If this one's great, these are bad. The other shirt has, these are great. That one's, mm, 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 mm. But I uniform, for uniform, because he has two shirts. We'll go four performances and then wash the shirts. Well, preferably on a two show day between the matinee and the evening because what I'm doing right now, who has time to do that? Especially the ensemble. There's a million shirts down there. But no one has time to repress everything between. So you can have it look like ass or you know, you can change out to the fresh one. Oh, also this cuff, which looks like a practical cuff, has elastic in the, you can't see this, can you? I'm not even doing this well. Doink, doink, there's elastic right there to keep this together as well and be faked. It's all fake, people. Smoke and mirrors. His shirts uh, have magnets for his tie, magnet for the collar, Velcro. 
Smoke and mirrors, people, smoke and mirrors. Anyways, um, that's enough, right? Yeah, I'm gonna prep before they come up because as soon as they get up here, it's like, let me go back to my perch in the stairwell and try to not, you know, get some things done while <laughs> they're milling all about. They're, they're lovely, but oh boy, they're loud. Actors, am I right? All right, all right. Um, oh, yesterday was um, tomorrow's a matinee. I'll tell you a matinee joke. Are you ready? Here's a matinee joke for you. So a waiter goes up to a table of matinee ladies and says, is anything all right? <laughs> okay, bye now.